looking at the distributed property, we have four different steps we need to follow. First one is to add the opposite. The only time we need to add the opposite is if we have subtraction in our parentheses instead of addition. Second step is to draw your arrows, which you'll see in just a second. Drawing your arrows does help us to get away from the mistake of not distributing into the second term. Third is to actually distribute your first number into your other two terms. And last thing is to combine like terms if you can do this. So looking at our first example, we have 7 times the quantity, y plus 11. So we need to, first of all, add the opposite. Notice it's already addition, so we're okay there. Second thing we need to do is draw our arrows. So actually from our first term, 7, we can distribute this into each of these terms by drawing those arrows. And notice we can just follow the arrows when we're actually distributing. So the first one, we have 7 times y. Bring down our addition sign, and then we have 7 times 11. When we simplify, 7 times y is equal to 7y. Bring our addition sign, and 7 times 11 is equal to 77. Now last step to combine like terms. The only time you can combine terms is if they either both have a variable or they both don't have a variable in which you call it a constant. So notice we have 7y plus 77. Since neither of them both have a variable or neither of them are both constants, this is our final solution, 7y plus 77. Looking at the second one, 1 half times the quantity x plus 4. First step, adding the opposite. Since it is already addition, we do not have to follow this step. Second step, we are going to draw our arrows. So from 1 half into x and from 1 half into 4. Follow the arrows again. We have 1 half times x. Bring down the addition sign. And 1 half times 4 from following our second arrow. Now we can simplify that. First is 1 half times x, which gives us 1 half x. Bring our addition sign. And then 1 half times 4, which 1 half times 4 gives us 2. So last step is to combine like terms. 1 half in our first term, we have an x. In our second term, we do not have an x. We do not have a variable. So in this case, we cannot combine any terms. So this would be our final answer, 1 half x plus 2. On to the next one, we have a negative 6 times the quantity t minus 1. First step, add the opposite. Since we have subtraction inside our parentheses, we can actually do this step this time. So change it from minus to add. The opposite of a positive 1 is a negative 1. Now second step, we can draw our arrows to help us distribute. So negative 6 into t and negative 6 into negative 1. So follow our first arrow, negative 6 times t. Bring down the addition sign now since we changed it to addition. And negative 6 times a negative 1. Now we can simplify. Negative 6 times t, a negative times a positive is a negative. And 6 times t leaves us with negative 6t. Bring the addition sign. Next, we have negative 6 times a negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. So we have negative 6t plus 6. Last step, combining like terms. We have a negative 6 with a t for the variable. And for the second one, we have a 6 without a t, no variable. So since we don't have two variables or two constants, this will be our final answer. Now for this last one, I'm going to change it up a bit so I can show you an example where you're going to have to combine like terms. So we're actually going to change this one to 3 times the quantity 7v minus v. This is the one we're going to be working with, not this one over here now. So first thing, add the opposite. Since we do have subtraction on the inside, we will need to perform this first step. Change subtraction to addition. Opposite of a positive v is a negative v. Step two, we're going to draw our arrows. 3 times 7v and 3 times negative v. 
So we have a 3 times a 7v. Bring down our plus sign. And then 3 times a negative v. So now we can simplify. 3 times 7v, 3 times 7 is 21, so we're left with 21v, bring our addition sign, and then 3 times a negative v, positive times a negative is a negative. And notice that this v, we do have an invisible 1 in front of it. Since we have 1v, if we add the 1, it does not change anything. So 3 times a negative 1v will leave us with a negative 3v. Now notice both of my terms do have the variable v. So in this case, we can actually combine our like terms. So notice we have a positive 21v and a negative 3v. So we want to determine which one is larger, 21v or 3v, because when you have different signs, you're going to keep the larger one. So notice 21 is the larger number, 21v, so our answer will be a positive and then the difference between 21 and 3 will leave us with our final answer, which is equal to 18v.